Hey everyone, today's lesson is approximating non-perfect squares. If you have a copy of the lesson worksheet, take that out now. If you don't, grab a sheet of loose leaf paper. You're also going to need a pencil, a calculator, and a list of perfect squares unless you already have them memorized. You may still have this sheet, hopefully you do, that has the perfect squares and the perfect cubes listed. Um, we're only going to be using the left side today because we're only doing problems that involve perfect squares. Let's get started. Here's the problem. We are going to approximate the square root of 20 to the nearest integer. Now, when we have a radical, if there's a number inside the radical that's a perfect square, it's very easy to answer, right? If we had a 36 in here, we would know that the answer is 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. If we had 144 in here, we would know the answer is 12, right? Because 12 times 12 is 144. 36 and 144 are perfect squares. However, 20 is not a perfect square. There isn't an integer that I can multiply to itself that's going to give me 20. So that's why we have to approximate it or estimate it. Now, the steps are on the side here. It's very, very easy. Let's start at step one we are going to find the two perfect squares the number falls in between. So I want to figure out what two perfect squares does 20 come right in between. Now I know them because I have my perfect squares memorized, but if I didn't, I could just look back on my list and see where would 20 fall in this lineup, right? So I'm going to be looking at the perfect squares. That's this column here. 20 doesn't come between 1 and 4, obviously or 4 and 9, or 9 and 16, but 20 does come right here between 16 and 25. So 16 and 25 are the two perfect squares that 20 would fall in between. So let's write that down. So the square root of 20 is going to be somewhere between 16 and 25. Okay, so now step two. Determine which perfect square is closer to the given number. So I'm going to look at my given number, which is 20, and I'm going to see which one of these two perfect squares is closer to it. Well, 16 and 20 are 4 away from each other, and 20 and 25 are 5 away from each other, so it's close, right? However, if I had to, if I had to make a choice, I would say that it's a little bit closer to the square root of 16 right, because it's only four away on this side, but from 20 to 25 is five. So it's just a little bit closer here. Now, the way that I'm gonna write my answer is I'm gonna say the square root of 20 is approximately, look at that equal sign, it's got a squiggle to it, right? That's because I am estimating, it's not an exact answer. The square root of 20 is approximately equal to the square root of 16, which is four. Right? And I know that that's 4 because the square root of 16 is equal to 4. Okay, so now we're going to take this a step further. Now we are going to approximate the square root of 20 to the nearest tenth. That means we want one number after the decimal point. So this is good because it's going to give us a little recap of what we just did. Square root of 20. First thing we did was we thought about which two perfect squares 20 falls between. We said it comes right between 16 and 25, right? We just look on our list and we find those two perfect squares. The square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 25 is 5. So that tells me that the square root of 20 is going to be somewhere between 4 and 5, right? It's going to be 4 point something. And that's what I want to find out because I am finding the estimate or the approximation to the nearest tenth. So I want one number after the decimal point. Now once I figure this out, that it's going to be four point something, I have to figure out what that point something is going to be. And I think the best way to start is to just start right smack in the middle. So the number that is right in the middle of four and five is 4.5. So let's check that. If I were to multiply 4.5 by 4.5, that's going to give me 20.25. So 20.25 is really close to 20. So I'm thinking that 4.5 is a really good approximation. But we always want to check to make sure that we have the closest number that we can get. 
So since 20.25 is a little bit high, let's try 4.4 times 4.4, right? Let's try a lower number. If I do 4.4 times 4.4, that gives me 19.36, which is also really close to 20, right? And 20 comes right in the middle here. So now it's just a matter of figuring out which one is closest to 20. So the difference between 20.25 and 20 is 0.25, right? I'm just going to make a little note of it here. It's that much away. And the difference between 19.36 and 20 is 0.64 away. So actually, this one is a little bit closer, right? Not much. Again, they're both really good estimates. But if I'm choosing the one that's the closest, it's going to be this one. So the way I'm going to write my answer is I'm going to say the square root of 20 is approximately, right, there's that squiggly equal sign again, 4.5. All right, so if both of these examples, right, going to the nearest integer or the nearest number and then also going to the nearest tenth made sense to you, you might want to stop the video and try this next problem on your own. However, this lesson I can see, you know, you might need to see another example. So if you just want to watch me do this next example too, I'm fine with that. I'm going to leave it up to you. You can either try it yourself, um, stop the video, and then restart the video and see how you did, or you can just stay with me right now and I'm going to go through this next one for you. All right, so we are going to approximate the square root of 95 this time, and we're going to go to the nearest integer, right? We're going to do that first, and then we're going to go to the nearest tenth. All right, so here we go, nearest integer. So I'm going to take the square root of 95, and I'm going to see which two perfect squares this number comes in between. Now again, I know my perfect squares, but if I didn't, I would go back to my list, and I would ask myself, where does 95 fall on this list, right? So again, here we go. I'm looking between 49, no, no, up oh, right here, right? 95 is going to come right here between 81 and 100. Okay, so now that I know that, I'm going to fill that in. My two perfect squares that 95 comes between. And we're only going to the nearest integer this time, so let's figure out which one is it closest to? Well, the difference between 81 and 95 is 14. And the difference between 95 and 100 is 5. So I want to see which one is it closer to. Well, it's definitely closer to the 100 because there's only a difference of 5 on this side, but there's a difference of 14 over here. So if I'm going to round this to the nearest integer, I'm going to say that the square root of 95 is approximately my little squiggle, and I'm going to say it's 10, right, because the square root of 100 is 10. All right, so that's how we would round it to the nearest integer. But now we're going to take it a step farther, and we are going to go to the nearest tenth. All right, so here we go. The square root of 81 equals 9. We know that. The square root of 100 equals 10. So that means that the square root of 95 is going to be somewhere between 9 and 10, right? It's going to be 9 point something. So again, we have to figure out what that point something is going to be. So let's start guessing. Again, like I said to you before, it's not a bad idea to start right in the middle, right? Start with that 9.5. And you've got a calculator, so taking these guesses really isn't taking a lot of your time, right? You can do 9.5 times 9.5, and that's going to give us 90.25. 90.25 isn't bad, but we're trying to get to 95, so I think we can definitely get closer than that. So let's try something a little higher. So maybe I'm going to jump up to 9.7 this time. And I'm going to do 9.7 times 9.7. And that's going to give me 94.09. Okay, so that's pretty close, right? Because I'm trying to get up to 95. But just to make sure that that's the closest I can get, I'm going to try 9.8 times 9.8. Because I like to try all the numbers just to be sure, and it doesn't take very long to check them. 96.04. 
All right, well, 95 is definitely going to come between these two. So again, let's look at it and let's see how far apart they are. Now, sometimes with decimals, um, I think it's easy if you think of it as money, right? I'll think of this as $95 and I'll think this of not, think of this as $94.09. So if I do that, this is like 91 cents away, right? So that's not bad. And then if I think of this one as money, it's a dollar four away. So they're both really, really close. But again, if I had to pick the one that was closest, it would be this one, right? 94.09 is a little bit closer to 95 than 96.04 is. So for my answer, I'm gonna say the square root of 95 is approximately, right? My little squiggle, cause I'm estimating 9.7. All right, so that is how you approximate non-perfect squares to the nearest integer and to the nearest tenth. If you need to go back and watch the examples again, I would certainly recommend that you do that. Um, if not, if you're still feeling a little bit confused, reach out to a classmate. And of course, you can always ask your teacher. I tell you all the time, but we love to help you. That's what we are here for. Until next time, bye.